YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we got another video for you guys so you can see in front of us we have a red build and we have an AMD Ryzen 3950X so we really have a computer build in front of us. It's going to be a very cool interesting build in order to take us through to what this build is about. Watch till the end of the video to find out what's so cool about this red build. So Gordon, today we have a red backdrop and we know it's an AMD build but do you want to let us know what's so cool about this AMD build? Well, what's so cool about it? First and foremost, I think we should let you know who the customer is actually. Wanna take a guess? Look at the color behind you. <laughs> well, this might turn out to be a shocker. It's actually the AMD head office in Singapore. They are located in Chai Chi by the way. And in case you're wondering, why are we building AMD systems for AMD themselves? Well, that's something I can't really talk about on camera. But suffice to say, this is not the first time that we've done it for them. We've done all manners of systems for them. Ryzen, Threadrippers, heck, we've even done Epic Server Class machines for them. Yeah, even if you message me personally, I also cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. <laughs> yeah, anyways, as Gordon has mentioned, he has done all these kind of machines. So, if you also want to have this kind of build for servers, Epic machines, you can check him out at Hypersystem Asia. Let's continue with the build. Let's go through the components. You can see in front of us we have this 3950X. What else do we have installed on this side? Well, what else do we have? Quite a fair bit actually. First and foremost, it's a very nice casing right over here. The Fantec P600S. Most other casings have like a lot of thumb screws down here to secure the panel. This guy... It's a nice, lovely hinge. So I'm going to take you through this set itself. So this time round, they have given us the requirements. They wanted a machine with 16 cores, a lot of RAM, as well as a GPU with 8 gigs of VRAM on it, as well as a copious amount of storage. So what did we do? First and foremost, the start of the show, the AMD Ryzen 9 3950X, 16 cores, 32 threads in a desktop class platform. Sitting right under this heatsink itself. This is the Cryoric R1 Universal 240mm fans. One here and a thinner one right over here. So you can see it's a pretty big chunk of metal actually. The emphasis with this build was on stability and reliability on its ventilation and cooling. So rather than go with what everybody expect would be a liquid cooling solution, we decided to put one of the biggest air coolers that there is around for the AM4 platform. These are four sticks of 32 gig g skill rib jaws, speed rated at 3200 megahertz, CL60. 32 times 4 gives you 128 gigs of RAM. Yes, my friends, this guy has 128 gigs of RAM. This guy has more RAM than some people have in their SSD. <laughs> All of it is sitting on the MSI X570 Gaming Pro Carbon Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi moniker emphasizing the fact that it has wireless AX on board along with Bluetooth 5.0. We come down to the GPU itself. We have the MSI Radeon RX 570 Mac. 8 gigs as per their requirements. They told us this was more than sufficient for what they have in mind. They won't really tell us any more than that. So that's why the 570 is here. For boot drive, it has the Gigabyte Aura PCIe 4.0. SSD capacity being 512 GB. We can't really see it here because it's sitting on the M.2 right under here, so it's covered. If we were to move downwards, we have the Seasonic Focus GX 750 watt 80 plus go, more than enough to power everything that's right inside here. For case fans, we have 340 millimeter fans, one behind, two in front. So these are intake, and this one is out. The one thing cool about this case is can do this. So this is how it looks like with all these panels like as it is. If let's say you need more airflow, you're working the CPU end or the GPU hard and then you want to give it as much uh, ventilation as you probably can, you just take out the two panels. And you have a high airflow design. So you have the option of two modes with this case. The high airflow mode which is what you see here with the panels taken off and the silent mode which is Name that because the two panels have some absorbent material. Want it to be a little bit more quiet. Just close it back up. Now we come to the next part. So there's a little loop down here that allows you to easily just pull. And this panel opens up. Yes, you can see we did quite a fair bit of cable management. If you were to look right underneath, it's a little bit hard to see. There are four, four terabyte the hard disk drives down here. Two on this side, two on this side. So we have individually labeled each of the four drives themselves. As to why the drives are labeled, the four drives are set up in dual rate one. This was done primarily to make it easy for either us or their staff to troubleshoot and determine, uh, let's say in the event of a drive failure, they need to be able to know which is the drive that has issues troubleshooting. Words. So we've come to 
to the next part of the video which is where we put this machine through its paces so the first benchmark that we are going to put it through is Vire which is a pretty well known and regarded again like I've mentioned in the previous video it's often used in the architectural interior design construction business kind of as a frame of reference a Ryzen 7 3700X will render this scene 1 minute 5 seconds uh, Intel Core i9-9900K will do it in about 1 minute and 2 seconds the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X which is the 12 core 24 thread Ryzen will do it in about 46 seconds which is about the same as the previous generation Generation AMD Threadripper 2950X. With all of those numbers in mind, where does this fella stand? Let's find out. That's quite shocking actually. It does it in 36 seconds. To put this in perspective, the 16 core 3950X does it about 10 seconds faster than the 12 core Ryzen 9 3900X. It is also 10 seconds faster than the previous Gen 16 core AMD Threadripper 2950X. The conclusion we can draw here is that if you're looking for normal desktop class CPU that can do CPU render, CPU calculation, and you want the best, just get the 3950X and don't ask questions. This is the guy to get. It is for the CPU benchmark itself. One other notable thing I like to talk about on this machine is how we have set up the four WD RAID drives inside here. So rather than set them up as four individual 4TB drives, what we have done is that we have uh, set them up in dual RAID 1. So what is RAID 1? Let's just use this set here as an example. Come to the first array. This is the boot SSD. This is the Gigabyte Aorus 512 Gigabyte PCIe 4.0 SSD. So what we have here is two drives. Each of these is 4 terabytes. But the usable space is 4 terabytes. So why? Because RAID 1 is also known as mirroring. So what happens is that in case either of these two drives fail, let's say the one labeled 0, this one over here, at least it has a copy of the data that was here. Okay, likewise in this, these two drives are mirrored. In short, redundancy. Okay, as you saw in the earlier part of the videos, we tag the four, four terabyte drives. One, two, three, four. So they correspond here to one, two, three, four. Like on this list down here. So in case, let's say for example, this particular drive here shows a fault. So right now it just says here normal. If there's something wrong with the drives, it'll stay otherwise like critical, that kind of thing. At least we'll be able to easily identify and replace the affected drive itself. So yes, even though we know that where this machine is going, it's not gonna really be playing any games whatsoever. But we've decided for the benefit of our audience, let's do one gaming benchmark. For the purpose of this video, I have chosen Forza Horizon 4 to be running the benchmark at 1080p. Ultra. So if you were to check back to one of our previous videos, we have actually done a benchmark with this game using this exact same video card versus the Galax uh, RTX 2070 Super back then. One, please check out that video. In that video, which was a couple of months back, the 5700 was paired with an AMD Ryzen 5 3600. So let's see how it fares now with a Ryzen 9 3950X at the helm. Let's see how it does in this one. Okay, right, so the numbers are in. So how does it fare? Very well, actually. At 1080p, ultra preset, we have achieved an average of 144 FPS. If you were to compare with the results we got in the RTX 2060 Super vs RX 570 video, that time the 570 scored. 132. So this time around, it scores 144. Whether this is due to driver optimization done over the last couple of months, or the fact that it's now paired with uh, AMD's top end uh, 3950X, that one may be something we may probably want to look more into detail. This is the results as it stands. Even though we know this machine isn't really going to be playing any games where it's going, the guy needs to sit down, uh, relax, and unwind with a game or two. He most certainly can. Yeah, we're going to have a very happy AMD employee next Monday, so this guy goes out on Monday as mentioned. We have one through you, the 3950X is Eclipse case. So yes, I hope you guys like what we are showing today. If you want to have such a build as mentioned on the video, you can contact me or contact Gordon from Typhoon Systems of Asia. If you'd like to watch more other videos right now, please do so. Yeah, check out my still doing super well, the aftermarket cooler versus stock cooler video. My other playlist, Asus playlist, AMD playlist. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, give me some comments, write in the comment sections below. Very important, click on the icon to subscribe to my channel, click on the bell to know where I put new videos. So right now we have this little thing over here also. So this thing will come in very very soon. If you want to know what it's about, check out my channel definitely. So thank you all, see you all, bye.